Marc Antoine. Bentley, how are you? Good. Good. Mark and I were just doing greetings. We hadn't started anything yet. Well, it's just the time, so that people come in. Um, oh, Danny. Hello. Hello. Hey. It's, I was hoping to get Jonathan to come, but he has a conflict today. Uh, he said, oh, I'll come next week. And I, eh. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no point. We we'll probably have a quorum. We do. Um, does anyone have any burning topics we have specified? To oh, Tim made it. Um, I do have an update on Reason Tracker that I can talk through, and um, Joel and I had some discussions on some ideas, but um, we can. It, see if anyone else has any topics before we dive into that. I was going to such the selfish tree <clears throat> changes. Anybody else, Tim? You got anything burning, or are you just? Uh, I'm just surviving. Happy, happy to <laughs> be. Here. I, I managed to see those actually meeting today, and I, I can only stay for half an hour because I have a standing meeting at at my four thirty. So I, I just wanted to see your faces and cool. be present for a little bit at least. Joel, did I interrupt you? Were you going to say something? Uh, I was just going to say that I don't have anything in particular, but I was, uh, you know, curious to talk about your and Carl's um, topics. So. Okay. Well, cool. Well, in that case, Carl, why don't you start us off with an update on, on your project? Sure. Um, how do I share here? Show captions, reactions. Can I share my screen? You should be able to. Everyone should have permissions. Participants, oh, it's the giant green button that I was passing over. <sighs> okay. Do you uh, see the screen? Yep. Okay. Um, I will just go over real quick because this is kind of in the middle of stuff. So. It's not like uh, fully done, but what I worked on for the past few weeks uh, was kind of was motivated by Bentley's um, sort of call and discussion around uh, mapping, getting an argument map. And it stood out to me because I, with how you have been kind of working on this sort of global type solution. And the thing that's cool about an argument map that's for a single person is that it's very I don't know what the right word is. Like, it's very like chunkable. Like it's something that interests me. It's like, I can imagine it being something that could potentially be a way for people to start using a tool where they create maps. And then like the next step would be figuring out how do maps relate to each other. Like if two people have maps on like the same topic or similar topics, or even they don't know that they're the same, how do you connect them? Um, but with that sort of generic introduction aside, uh, what we have here is a Chrome extension that I haven't published yet because I just didn't go through the effort of doing it. And I wanted to review permissions because I wasn't positive I needed all the permissions that I was uh, using. And it's uh, using Chrome Sidebar, uh, which has a lot of nice features as far as, I don't know, fitting nicely into the quote unquote Chrome of the browser. Like when you resize, you know, it automatically, you know, this HTML view of the page over here automatically, um, you know, doesn't it doesn't have any concept of having more space like it resizes fairly nicely um it's persistent so if you switch between tabs the sidebar just kind of stays there just kind of nice for looking across um pages it does have a problem where i can't uh pinch uh zoom which annoys me and so i've been and i may move it out of the sidebar because i think it may be a limitation of um sidebars that they don't let you, they don't capture scroll or uh, zoom movements um, but I was going to file a Chrome issue first or actually post on Stack Overflow first and just see if it's actually something I could work around. Um, but the graph you see here, the argument app, like hopefully it kind of makes sense. Um, you know, of course you have like arguments or justifications for things. Um, you know, and they point to the things they're arguing for or against. Uh, these arrows are um, 
are uh, dashed when they are like defeated or like invalid. So uh, this is a counter argument that, you know, is sort of attaching to this argument line or this justification line saying like, you know, you're not, you're not valid. Um, that's something I don't like that <laughs> the, the layout of this graph sometimes changes just by simple things like selecting things. Uh, but this was kind of like a hackathon level of uh, approach here. So things like that exist. Um, things are colored according to like, that's something I started to explore is like, how do you, how do you infer the outcome is what I'm calling like the outcome of a, of a, um, basis or a proposition. So man, I, I didn't prepare the, or to organize this. So sorry, this is not better organized. Um, so I, I have this concept that things that the user adds, so propositions that they add that appear to be like their own unique contribution, like, Hey, I'm saying this as the user creating my own map, that those are just presumed to be true. And that's why this is green. And that's why the justification that it targets is invalid, you know, defeated by this counter argument, because this is presumed to be true. And uh, this argument uh, here is composed of things that appear in the um, source. And unfortunately, this is broken right now. So you have to, it worked earlier, so I don't know what broke, but you have to imagine instead of opening the new page, which it just did, you imagine that this actually um, should be scrolling to this. Let me find out where this is. Uh, oh, it, there's this annoying thing on this page where if it's not expanded, um, we still highlight. So imagine that clicking on this just automatically scrolled you down here because I know they'll be able to get that to work with just a little bit of effort. It worked before. Um, so this has an appearance here, uh, meaning that uh, the, I, the user, have said, you know, this proposition is what I think the user or the speaker of this article is saying right here. And since I'm saying that that proposition appears there, it's not presumed to be true because it's something that potentially, you know, we're critiquing uh, that because it appears in the source we're looking at, you know, whereas this one I added my own, you know, is presumed to be true. Um, and here you have an example of something I presume to be true that's uh, targeting uh, something that appears in the source. And so you can see it's uh, colored red uh, as in like it's been, um, you know, shown to be um, uh, disproven. And I was right in the middle of changing around these colorings. So that's why there's this, there's this annoying, um, it does work. Oh, so clicking on things does work. If you click on a highlight, it takes you to where that thing appears in the map. Um, I was right in the middle of dealing with coloring right uh, when we kind of started uh, earlier this morning. Uh, I mean to say, so um, I don't like these, you know, black boxes. They're kind of silly. Like I'll probably just make them go away and maybe they'll only show up when you hover over them. Um, but this one shows up in red because it's uh, it is a excerpt of the source that corresponds to a proposition that has been shown, according to me anyway, to be uh, disproven. Um, and so that's kind of the end of my short demonstration. I mean, obviously, there'd be a lot more to say about like a stuff under the hood and everything. But that's the idea, which is kind of um, a user going to a source. Mapping the arguments, that's the first level, mapping. Second level is critique, personal critique. You are know, like, okay, so now what do I say about this? And I've only done a little bit of that. Like most of this is a argument mapping, like things that appear, at least I say, appear in the source. And there's a few things I've added on my own to critique, uh, you know, with the argument that I found. And then you can imagine, I mean, there's a few other levels, but like a third level then would be like a critique of a critique, or I don't know what to call that, but like someone who sees what I've said, and they're like, oh, you know, I disagree with you here. And, you know, I'm building on top of that. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of where this is at. Um, yeah, kind of fun. I guess I kind of alluded to this. But I what I'd like to that besides like the basic functionality, what I'd like to see this happen next is I like quote unquote publish this map, and people can see a stream of publishing, and like obviously not just me, like other people can publish their streams. And you can imagine that then the critique of critique could occur in that stream, like oh interesting, you know Joel you know, read this article and had this to say about it. Oh, I agree with him here. And oh, and I have this other point to say about why, you know, this critique that he made is true. Oh, but I disagree with this one and here's why. Yeah, sorry. I guess Jax may be the first with his hand up, so. Yeah. Are oh, you still muted, Jax? Yeah, I was on mute, damn. Um, this is cool. Um, I'm finding that sophistry, sophistry is 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 not in Google. What what what's what's the story on the software? What am I missing? Um, 
when you say it's not in it's up it's on it's on github yeah i can i'll share the but he uh, hasn't he hasn't published the the uh plugin yet That's yeah i haven't put it on the i haven't put it on the chrome store yet because i just haven't gone through the well it, it, but google hasn't found it either uh, uh i typed it in and and it, it yeah so it, i was have. worried about that yeah yeah it might not have i mean i, I only created it three weeks ago or four weeks ah, ago. Ah. So it might not have, uh, yeah. I'd like to know more about it. Great. Yeah, that sounds fun. Let me, how do I chat now? Sorry, I've got this small view that puts you guys- Although if you want to put any messages in the, I could probably stick around a little bit more visible in the uh, CDL. You Mark Antoine's put it there, so. Okay, cool. Thank you. Hi. Yeah, uh, just real quick. Um, I mean, I, there's all the obvious things. This is new, but um, how long would it take for a reader to break it down like that? And of course, are you thinking of incorporating AI to auto map it for you and then you be able to add your own things? Um, how long did this take me? Like, like the, how long would it take a new user, given what you've built, right, to go ahead and map something like that? Uh, I I don't know. Um, I think that this would take it. I think it would take one of you uh, who maybe hasn't used the tool before. It would take you maybe I don't know, hopefully like thirty minutes to ramp up on the tool, and then maybe to map something like this, I don't know, maybe an hour. Um, I didn't show you how to map, partially because I think I was concerned that maybe I broke something while my refactoring, because I created this map before I um, before I then started adding a bunch of features, because I wanted to have something to work with. But like creating a proposition, oh, there's that annoying thing. So double clicking creates a new node. Um, and I need to make it so it scrolls that, because it used to be that this map was small enough that when I double clicked, it was easy to find the thing. And now it's a little harder. So I, don't know, I say, well, actually, usually what you start with is you find something. So you're reading, you're reading. Uh, du, 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 du. I'm going to make this one really literal. So, you know, you read the process of this is you're reading and something occurs to you. are like, oh, the person is saying something, whatever that something is. Like, that's a human, it's a very human. Well, they're I, making I, an I, argument, right? Or they're making, yeah, I don't, and right I don't mean to discredit AI because AI can be pretty good at this too. But, you know, this is something that previously was only humans and now AI is kind of good at too. So, you, you capture this and here it showed up, you know, here. And then you say to yourself, okay, well, what are they saying? What did I know? And you know, in this case, it's very literal. So I'm 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 actually going to say they're just saying exactly what the quote says, but you can imagine a level of interpretation here. So and my, my follow-up question now yeah. that you're showing this was gonna be how do you deal with like rarely is a document oh. about a single claim, right? So oh, you right. end up having things floating around. It looks like that's how you've done it then, is you you let things float and you associate with the different things that come up yeah so something i spent a little time doing was figuring out how to um how to figure out the quote-unquote conclusions so i i call if you're a tree of the um or sorry if you're a root of a tree uh, in the graph then you're a conclusion so these are actually calculated automatically this no u.s jurisdiction this ranked choice voting is worse off and they're conclusions because they are um, propositions that don't justify anything else they're only justified themselves so those are conclusions um that new one we just added isn't a conclusion because it doesn't have a single argument attaching to it um where'd it go if i click on this the oh, there it is. yeah so this one if, if i added a justification to it then it would be like a new oh it's so annoying i really want to fix the layout thing but if i say okay this thing targets that and proves it to be true so that I actually haven't tried this before. It should automatically update. Um, if I open a map. Yeah, so it it noticed that this, you have a new conclusion here. So I'm calling those conclusions. And so, yeah, basically, just like you said, it's it's dynamic um, right now. Yeah, and the idea is that, you know, I, and, you know, speaking specifically about this one, I came into this thinking that this was pretty much the main conclusion, like basically nowhere should, no place should adopt ranked choice voting. And then later on, I kind of discovered, oh, wait a second, they have this other point, which is that ranked choice voting is worse than a runoff election, which like they kind of allude to throughout this article, but it didn't jump out at me. Which is actually and, their main point. I think it's actually their main point. So I need to spend more time connecting more arguments to this one, but I haven't done it yet. Yeah, exactly. That's their main point? 
that it's I think so, yeah. Even though I thought it was this one. Well, right? it's when you get the Heritage the Foundation, right? What do you expect? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mark Antoine, you had your hand raised and it went away. Are you? Are you I just went away because to... I spoke. <laughs> yes, I still want to. Uh, no, the first, uh, very interesting. The I'm curious in terms of so. The text that you get from there is mm -hmm. not necessarily the text that's on the map. So you do allow rephrasing. Yeah. So. I've been thinking of this in terms of a quote unquote appearance. And so what I call an appearance, it's like a relationship yeah. between an excerpt and then some proposition. And what wow. I did is if you have um, if you have an appearance, the excerpt itself disappears. Uh, so here's the excerpt, here's the quote. Um, and it disappeared because yeah. it's only an appearance, but you can make those appear. Um, so if I click here and then in the table, right now it's auto hidden, but I can go visible. So the, um, Oh, it's so annoying. I need to fix that. So somewhere the uh, if I click, it should highlight there. Okay. So now the excerpt is also present in the graph. It's also an appearance of this uh, proposition, or this proposition oh, appears in that excerpt is the idea. No, that makes perfect sense to me. And silly question: Where is that stored? Is that on a server? Is that local? It, it's all local storage. Um, okay. Yeah. So if I go so, into so, uh, so yeah. no no. Uh, no extension yet. Okay, cool. No, it's completely you... local. Yeah. There is an upload download though. I mean, if you're like, you know, if you want to like literally grab it and share it or, you know, back it up, you can download yep. uh, things and upload them. Yeah, the thing to do is to connect that to uh claim miner because that's what claim miner is storing, right? That's pretty much the same data model. Okay. That sounds the, fun. The, the the other the other thing I'm curious about is what do you use for the highlights in the original document? Is it hypothesis? It's not hypothesis, it's something else. I wrote this uh, because, oh, why are we stopped in a, do we have an uncaught exception? No, oh, something broke. Um, I wrote this because I don't think, this one doesn't do a great job of it. Let me, well, I don't, I won't bore you with doing it. So with the screenshot I shared, well, I guess it's at the um, GitHub uh, thing. So let me go to, you look at the, um, oh, this one doesn't really show, well, it does show overlapping to some degree. So, sorry, I, the reason I wrote it myself is because I don't, I'm not aware of any um, highlight solutions that do a good job of overlapping highlights. Maybe there right. are and I missed it, um, no, but this one right. does kind of do a nice job. And I, I, I mentioned that I'm switching around the coloring. So like right now I'm trying to do just coloring according to like, proven disproven but the previous highlighting which just did round robin through like five different rainbow type colors it was actually kind of nice because you can see like red is overlapping blue looks kind of purplish there and as you hover over one becomes very red and it's like obvious what that's one part of and then you move over to the blue one you know like you can see now that's all blue and it they the overlap happens nicely um I'm tempted to like try and bring that back up real quick, but it might, uh, let's see, do I have any chance? And, and that's in the sophistry code base. I'll definitely have a look at that. That's something I've been meaning yeah. to build and never got around to it. And okay. I, I'm very interested in uh, overlap overlap highlights. Okay, Library. yeah, because I actually wanted to like make that a NPM that could be shared. So if you have the motivation as in it would be good for you, then sure, let's do it. That sounds fun. Um, I wonder if this will work. Let's see. So I just reloaded it from the previous version. Of what, what, one way I've been thinking about this, and that's getting a bit, uh, is instead of having overlay blocks, have kind of used the, the CSS before after and do brackets, because then you can have as many brackets as you want and color the brackets. And then when you hover over the, the bracket, this bracket extends to this, this bracket extends to that, and make them nested. Hmm. Would okay. would you actually like, like what if you have two that end in the same character? Like do you have the yeah, well, you'll brackets? have two brackets. Like do they they fit into the text so that it shifts them over or do you have them like yes. over the text? Okay. I see. Yeah, because CSS yeah, before after they become part of the of the text. Right, right, right. The, the before after works on spans? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yes. You have uh, like a a mock up for what you're describing because I didn't quite understand the visual or the UX. Well, was... let's we'll play with it. This this is well, cool. it's kind of similar <laughs> to code brackets and code where you get paired highlights 
and paired bracket coloring. And yeah. If you do Except without the constraint, without the constraint of it being nested, uh, like you could have in theory yeah. brackets like this, right? Yes. Which right. wouldn't make sense. That's true. Code. That doesn't allow. That's not allowed in code. Yeah. That's not allowed in code. Um. Yeah. I think that's a good UI solution for that. I'd be curious to see how it looks with like, you know, a lot of them on the screen, but it seems like the best I can think of. I don't know. Yeah, for my videos also, I want to. I I don't know if I'm going to want to do this, but sometimes when I'm doing quotes, I want to like have the 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 web page come up and then have the text kind of fly out and then go into the diagram. But I haven't decided whether I'm going to use anyone's quotes directly because I'm finding that I'm completely, and that's the discussion I was having. It's like I'm completely rewriting it so that it's unrecognizable anymore. <laughs> Uh, I think this is fine, but I think it's interesting to say this idea was expressed here uh, because then you're connecting it to sources. Yeah, it's and, and, and I'll probably like, here are five places where this idea was expressed and just yep. pop them up on the screen for like a couple seconds and they can pause it. I mean, it's, it's a many-to-many -many relationship, right? A, a passage of text can be interpreted in many different ways or can have multiple... Uh, claims extracted from it because people disagree on what it means. Jack, can you be... have something else? Yeah. Now you're muted again. Who knew? Um, first of all, I'm I'm really fascinated with this. I, a long time ago, I wrote a, a program I called LightNet which I wrote in plain vanilla JavaScript and, and Marc Antoine rewrote it very nicely for me and in, in, into a, a class-based system with, with the weights and so forth. But its process was that you, you, you would highlight things in, in a document and then you would pull the semantic triples out of it and it would build you a knowledge graph that way. And so there's there's a similarity in in the kinds of work, but I do have a comment on the on the GitHub repo. Um, it's missing its license file. It might be missing the license file. I think I I, I this is again like a hack up on level. I think it says ISC in the package somewhere. It, it says it in the package JSON, um, yeah. but uh, it's it's it's. I will add that. Yeah, that's. Yeah. Other than that, this is really cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Cool. Thanks, everyone. Um, how do I stop sharing this one? Uh, any other questions on that topic? So kind of the other thing, so uh, an update on Reason Tracker, which I haven't done a lot, but I did hire a... Um, an executive assistant who's been helping me pull claims actually out of, well, no, um, I had her start from the beginning and said, go find four articles, two pro, two con on ranked choice voting. Um, although now I'm wondering even a smaller topic would probably be the U.S. changing to permanent daylight savings time. That may be an even smaller debate that would still be interesting, but um anyways so she, she found different articles um and she's pulling out claims and we're talking about claims and i'm having them put it into reason track well not even in the reason tracker but just to map out the claims in an excel spreadsheet in a hierarchy um because i knew i was gonna get to this problem where we have all these claims from the article but the way people are thinking about it is not the way I want to do it in Reason Tracker, um, but I haven't been able to like um, express the intuitions I'm having about difficulty of putting these arguments um, into an analysis the way I want to do it, as opposed to the way I think people tend to do it. So having someone organizing all this stuff and then having bouncing uh, ideas with, with someone and seeing whether that explains something has been pretty helpful. And I put one of my kind of guesses on, on 
what's different on, on when we're analyzing. So reason tracker is really going to be, I thinking right now, a kind of a decision making tool. So you have a a proposal, a single proposal that's yes, no. And we'll talk about later on expanding it to multiple propositions and the problem space and stuff like that. But right now I'm experimenting with just this one core of uh of this system. So or and actually, you know, I I might not even build that out. I just this may just be a, a plug in into other systems, but that's the experimental space I'm working in. And and um I'm reluctant to make a whole bunch of different categories for the different claims or types of um, nodes in the graph. Um, but I'm getting to the point where I kind of have to, but I want to leave those very loose and just kind of like guidance um, as opposed to hard coding them into the system and creating a finite set. Um, so I was noticing that when I was re rewriting the claims that I was seeing out in the wild, I, since this is kind of like, here's a proposal, kind of like the first layer underneath that are, these are the the effects that are going to come out that, that some people, that people think are going to happen when we take this action. Um, in this case, implementing rate right choice voting at the congressional U.S. level, um, what would so like they were expressing things like, oh, it's too complicated. It violates one person, one vote. And I'm like, that's all very nebulous um, and not helpful. Um, so really, when, when you're trying to make this decision, it's really like, oh, well, our concerns are more like it's going to decrease voter turnout. It's going to increase strategic voting. It's going to decrease so voter satisfaction, slow down the results tabulation. So that's the reframing of what the claims that were being made in these documents. Some of them are kind of stupid, but um, so I don't know, but I'm just kind of like throwing that out. That's probably all wrong, but I'm starting to think about that. And then in communications with Joel, where it's becoming obvious that you, you still need kind of another layer beneath that. I don't remember now what I'm saying that was. So yeah, so then the reasons why it might be true or false and then, you know, any evidence that goes against it. And these are just kind of got guidelines to think about it. It's not like, oh, we're going to have a effect node, you know. Um, anyway, so I was just kind of throwing that out there to see if people thought that that was stupid um, or if they can see immediate problems yeah. i don't want to get in a big nitpicking fest but I i'll be very honest I'm, I'm having a bit trouble to follow what you're trying to say uh so maybe i'm missing something it's not surprising you're to uh, uh no. you wanted to finish no. yeah yeah go ahead, go ahead. Uh, i was just gonna say like to clarify i think bentley you could correct me but you're like you had these you came across these articles that had uh, these claims worded kind of nebulously like uh, uh, this is too complicated or this is, you know, violates one vote. I forgot the specific thing, but like things that like someone would say are bad, but like aren't concretely bad without understanding why they're bad. And then so then you were thinking about uh the actual effects of those things like well why is complication bad oh well that could decrease voter turnout or something and with those differences of like oh thing that i see as bad compared to a thing that's like an, a concrete effect that you know other people can see as bad like you could create like guidance of like okay you can have a node that's like an effect or a claim that's like an effect uh and you can word it like an effect, or you can have a thing that like causes the effect. I've always said in arguments, we should distinguish, sorry, Carl, I, I didn't finish, so I'm going on. We should distinguish the point of fact, like, like if we do this, this will happen, that's what you're calling the effect, and the criterion. Like, this is better than this, according to this you know, th this is the criterion we're using to judge why this effect is better than that one. And now I think what you're describing is not quite 
criteria because they're they're kind of tentative criteria, right? Complicated. It's it's a criterion, but it's a criterion that is important because, for example, well, complicated was an example of the bad phrasing. So I wouldn't use complicated at all. No, 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 no. But it, it's really interesting because how do we? If somebody says it's too complicated, how do we classify it, right? And 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 I think we have to think of, and, and this is something I've been thinking about more and more now. A lot of claims are vague and meaningless, and I think if we do tools, one thing we want to help people do is go through the process of transforming vague and meaningless claims into more better defined claims. And in the case of it's too complicated, well, we can say, well, one impact could be that people will not understand how their vote translated into an action. And so they'll feel, you know, cheated because the, the mechanisms are, are too obscure to be understood by most people. So that would be one possible more precise impact. And and why is that? Why is that important? Well, because people should feel like democracy, they should feel that their votes matter and that they understand the mechanism. And that why is that you know, why is that important? I think this is this is probably a final cause. But I think the there's always a why is that important? Why is the one person, one vote important? Because everybody has should have equal rights. It's a kind of equal dignity. But on the other hand, what are the goals of voting? Uh, to have everybody's voice represented and to take the best decision. So when are those in conflict? Like when is there a trade-off between goals? Uh, and these are the kinds of things that you want to be able to discuss. Like go from this is bad, this is bad, this is good to, well, this is more important than this. This goal is more important than this or this goal trumps this, this other goal. And, and, and why would it? What are we trying to do and, and get people to regress to a more abstract, what's the, the meta goal here? Uh, and, and being able to, these are not arguments. These are meta arguments. This is about saying this criterion should be seen as more important than that criterion because... And, and and this is the well, kind I think of you'll eventually get to that. But there's also the discussion of is that criterion even true? Oh, not and the then, criterion, but is the fact itself true? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a basic absolutely. Is it true that this will decrease voter uh like there's a criteria? Is it important that is voter engagement that important? Or is it more important that, you know, the voters who are like if they don't care about this, should they be engaged? But there's the question is. It, will it really decrease voter engagement? So those are two separate questions, and and they need to be both made very explicit. What do you think, Carl? I was gonna say that what you're talking about reminds me of is it Tollins warrants? Is it the Tollin model that has warrants? Tollman, Tollman that has warrants. Yes, Tollman. I can have the stick in my head. Huh? I cannot regurgitate that whatsoever no matter how many times i've seen it the tolan tolan model i cannot it does not work in my brain but but go ahead and say what you're going to say i'm just saying well i personally don't like the warrant uh approach in the sense that it makes like one thing primary and one thing secondary you know like the warrants are sort of um you know ancillary to some main support because personally mm -hmm. i tend to think of them as kind of like co-equal like either you have you have either you have presented evidence that's sufficient to the person they're presented to for them to conclude the thing you're trying to conclude or you have not presented you know sufficient well although i guess you know maybe they're like okay well yeah those ones are getting the right direction like they're not contrary or irrelevant but they don't prove it to me so and so the way i think about it is uh in my tool is proposition compounds like there's a proposition there's another one there's another one the three of them together should prove the thing and so i mean that I don't know if that's the way you want to think about it, um, either like a warrant approach or like a, you know, a um, conjunction of independent things. But yeah, because it's too complicated is not sufficient in most people's minds. And it depends on the viewer, right? Or the, the person you're trying to convince. Because one person, especially if they wrote the article, they see too complicated. They're like, of course that proves it because they know all the things are implied. But you have to figure out who's the person you're trying to influence along the spectrum. Not that it's a single, you know, axis, 
across the space of opinions and mindsets and beliefs that people hold internally, who are you trying to convince? And what do you have to show them to show them that it's convincing and like too complicated combined with, oh, well, when, when things are too complicated, people, you know, lose trust in, you know, the voting process or whatever the case may be. Um, that's how I think about it. And I think that potentially there would be multiple alternative justifications, as I call them, you know, with maybe you know, increasing levels of, uh, you know, uh, increasing, um, I think what I'm trying to say, like, you know, for people who have less context, you have to give them more argumentation. You have to give them more examples or more more warrants, you know, to use, a, you know, just to use the term. Whereas for a person who has a lot more context or has looked into it deeply or just, you know, jumps to conclusions quickly. You they're can show they're them familiar with the errands. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, no, that, so, that's absolutely true. Go ahead. Um, I think what I'm struggling with is not expressing what they want. I guess what I'm saying is I don't like how people think about making decisions. So I'm not just proposing how to rewrite their stuff into it. I'm saying when, when I'm doing these videos, this is how we're going to make this decision as a community and as a group. And this is the proposed way. Um, and we'll we'll still want to look at what people said to make sure we're including all of their concerns. But whether or not it's too complicated is a dumb way to think about it. It's the thing is what what's the what's the uh, so yeah, I don't know. I guess on I'm, I'm also like when I'm talking to people I'm having work doing this data collecting, I need a way to describe to them this is the way that you kind of do it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just babbling. Go ahead. Yeah, I just, if I'll jump in just real quick. I, I don't think that's a dumb way to look at it, to say it's too complicated. Because frankly, attention is limited. Even my attention is definitely limited. I only want to spend so much time thinking about anything, like voting, shopping, you know, my taxes, insurance. And if it's too complicated, that is a negative. So if, if a vote right. is... But the... But the, the, the it's and maybe it's more the phrasing than than the thinking through, but the too complicated bit is not the not the we're if we're sitting there measuring how complicated something is that that's not the that's not the real issue. The real issue is it going to reduce the number of voters are going to make people vote or those are the things. The amount of complicatedness affects that. So they're not going back to the actual core hmm. problem. It's a distracting framing going to use a, another use of the term framing. Um, and so, yeah, I guess really I, I don't, yeah. So I, I am converting that, but. So sorry, Jack, I'll go very quick. The But that's exactly what I was trying to say about going from vague to precise. It's important to workshop it. If they, if they say something vague, it's like progressive formalization that we keep speaking about. The work is to the okay. What is it that is actionable that you mean, that you could mean, and, and, and work them through it. And yeah, it's crap as it is, but that doesn't mean it's not. That doesn't mean there's not an insight there that is worth, yeah, digging out. But the work has to be done because as is, I agree, it's useless. But that doesn't mean it should be left out. Yeah, it needs. To, well, I mean, it may not be. The the wording complicated, I guess the word complicated will probably be in the eventual final thing, but it will be like, when we say why, when we're proving is this true or not, we're going to say people will stop voting because the you know it's too complicated. But, but, but it's the path that gets them to the more formal notion. Yeah. They have to go from vague to formal, obviously. Well, but you can approach it from people won't vote. As opposed to it's too complicated. And yeah, that's... but 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 that's not how thinking works. You think from vague to 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 precise. I I don't think always. I think there's times yeah, often. Often, but I'm not I, I... trying to model how people think. I'm trying to improve how they think. And so when yes. I when I'm taking them through an education of this topic area, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, you, you have to tell them this is vague, it's not useful as such, but how can we get it better? But the fact that they start with vague is just a fact of existence. The fact that what I'm saying is it's not a reason to dismiss it, it's a reason to workshop it. Well, yeah, I, you have to tell them yeah, that's not good enough. Yeah. 
The I'm, workshopping's I'm not really an option in this case. I'm making a video, so I'm just reading their stuff. I'm not, I don't have access to these people. But yes, if you were in a room with a person, then you'd have to ask them, what do you mean? What What's wrong with it? I mean, I, I don't even know how to phrase that without people thinking I'm an idiot. But, <laughs> but it's kind of like, what do you mean by too complicated? Or what's the effect? Anyways, what's sorry, that? Jack, you've been waiting for a while. No, this this was this was really lively, and and it's the kind of thing that has to happen. So that it, it, it that's fine. I I kind of want to unwind the clock for just a minute and minute and go all the way back to what Carl opened with, and and he was showing documents that he he was annotating and and mapping that were essentially showing the dark side of. If I recall right, the dark side of of uh, rank voting, and 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 I'm very familiar with lots of documents that espouse it as the you know the second coming of Christ, and so I want to I I want to I want to put a an an underline under the word federation. It's it's really awesome that we're making all of these maps of different worldviews. But it's only when we federate them that you can begin to draw the lines between the between the same comments or the same claims being pro and the same claim being con, and and you can draw this you can find the the distinctions and it's it's the wormholes among these conversations that I'm I'm most interested in and federation is what what brings that about. We can have dozens of different mapping tools uh from sock you know from sacra tree to to sophistry to reason whatever and because and kialo and god knows what else and they're all collecting worldviews through different ux and 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 what what the world needs is to be able to get a hold of the big picture and see the wormholes among the among the conversations. That's all. I'm all, I'm done. Thank you. I agree. Uh, can I follow up on that a little bit? Sure. Um, I think you're absolutely right. That I did a really quick search to try and see if pr Blue Sky uh, Protocol could support something more complicated, like not just Twitter style content. My my like five minute. Uh, conclusion was that it didn't support that out of the like easily out of the box like it was mostly around microblogging tweet style stuff so if anyone knows of a protocol that would be a good basis for something more complicated like here's a map um here's i i, I haven't even thought through it but like you know you want to embed you probably want to embed the um somewhere you want to embed things that appear in it and then find in a high dimensional space, similar things, right? Because just because one person worded it slightly differently here from there shouldn't prevent you from identifying the connection. So I'll stop there. But uh, if anyone- but th 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 about This is or... what hyperknowledge is about. This okay. is exactly what the hyperknowledge project is to have a federation protocol for this. Now, in terms of transport mechanism, we could presumably put it over uh, activity pub or a lot of different things. I don't care that much, but the, the basic notions you need for it are let's let's go through it because we need to have the notion of a, a quote in a document that's very easy we have a, to have the notion of a standalone claim or you know something like that but then there's has to be many formulations like not only does it have there's many quotes that can be interpreted as this claim, but there's many competing formulations of that claim. And and what's really important is the relationship between the claims. But this is all I care about <laughs> making making this. And I'm right now. Uh, I did I did tell you all that I got uh, a, a pared down version of claim miner out on uh, my GitHub now in public without okay. the Society okay. Library code. Yeah, oh, okay, my... last meeting. But it's good. Uh, it was mentioned last. And and I'm I'm working on making it a bit simpler and unifying it with hyperknowledge. There's a lot to do in that direction. And you know, hyperknowledge is still very much a prototype. But I do want to have uh 
like it should be possible already now to use claim miner as a backend for storing the kind of data you have and that then it becomes a hub for federation uh, because as I said it's the same data model very much not the visual aspect but the whole logic of it but I think the visual aspect should be part of the tool it's the it's the UX it's a presentation layer I don't think we need to federate the presentation layer but what I'm trying to do also is to have a kind of meta model for frames and that's what's taking time but that's that's my but the, the, in this case what we're dealing with is fairly simple frames right we have uh oppose uh oppose approve links and then uh a position to the link so not exactly a relevance link but almost so yeah should be should be pretty simple to add that yeah, I I think that Carl said exactly what I think. Um, he he said these people might say the same thing, but they say it in different ways, and that was exactly what my PhD research was about, and it's what led to Open Sherlock, and some of my Open Sherlock work impacted Mark and Juan's thinking, and so what I like is that the hyper knowledge protocol is takes everything I was trying to do as a PhD and blows it up into the real world. But, you know, I used, I used a trivial example in, in my, in my PhD that if for a computer, uh, if I ask the question, what are the causes of climate change? And somebody answers CO2 causes climate change. And somebody else says, well, climate change is caused by carbon dioxide. All of us English native people know, and even Mark Antoine knows that they said the same thing. Um, and, and, but the computer doesn't and it can't. And so there has to be some NLP, some natural language processing to go on to morph those down into the, basically the canonical form, which is CO2 cause climate change. And that's, that's the canonical. So you took a, a passive verb and turned it into the active, which meant you had to swap the the subject and the object, and then you can use, um, uh, I'm a topic mapper, so a topic mapper said, the topic map said that CO2 and carbon dioxide are, are synonyms, so you can do the mappings and, and canonicalize everything. And that was that was my, my PhD work. And so I think we're all nibbling at the same, away at the same space of trying to make it so we can digitize um human discourse and and makes help have the computers seriously help us make a lot of sense of it yeah the, the, and, and the difference is i'm not even trying to do the nlp part or canonicalize as such but i'm interested in creating the structures for the equivalence classes that are the result of canonicalization the the, the for me it's less important to say there's one way to say it because I think that will vary in different people will have but is are we saying the same thing is there an equivalence class we can make out of these statements which one is picked as favorite that will vary as long as we can negotiate is this really the same thing and 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 negotiate and renegotiate for me the dynamicity of this is very important I think we're saying the same thing until we realize we are not because we found the difference later on that's important but or this is close enough for this purpose and not that purpose. There'll probably be a kind of hierarchical uh, clustering there. But these are the, basically an equivalence class is saying we're erasing that distinction. And what distinction are we choosing to keep? What distinctions are we focusing on and erasing? Anyway, well, th those are details. The, the 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 NLP stuff is extremely important and useful, and but the reality is right now in Play Minor, I took the shortcut of using embeddings for that, which works as a source. It's not reliable, but when the embeddings are closed, it means that things are related somehow. They may not be the same, but uh, they're certainly candidates to be the same. 
that's there's a there's a new embedding that came out recently very cute by the way uh in uh, in the llama or llama uh, oh I've been placed saying if you have this text and this claim is this text really saying this claim is this claim really grounded in this text uh that's very cute that they have they they've trained uh an embedding for that oh, let me find it uh it's called one second Be bespoke mini check uh so it's again for what it's worth but people are thinking about this But anyway, the, the, in terms of, there were efforts to put claims in, hello, how are you? There were efforts to put claims in, in, in much earlier um, systems. Uh, I remember in, in shock there was, uh, which was a RDF for online communities uh, ontology. There were there were and there was an extension for claims. I don't think anybody used it, uh, but the, the the possibility of claim negotiation being part of the action verbs of an extended activity pub protocol I see as extremely promising. Sorry, that's my bandwagon. So let me uh, just double check. No one seemed to really bristle at the idea of for this, you know, if reason tracker is more of a decision process than suggesting a flow that says, here's the motion, these are the potential effects of it, and then whether those effects are true, mm -hmm. false, and relevant, like Mark and Ton was saying, which one's more important uh, if they're true. Um, that seems like a reasonable starting place. It's it's, it's a starting point. I, I think what's missing here very much is a way to discuss the trade-offs. If we decide that some criteria are conflicting, can we have a way to discuss, okay, how do we trade off, you know, cost on this criterion versus cost on that criterion? I, I, I'm, so the way I'm thinking of handling that is that, you know, we have a relevance, pros and cons relevances. So if you have a reason why this effect is more, having this effect is more or less important than the other ones, then you add a reason. And then we could debate on whether that reason is true in the same way that but we... It, 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 if you're looking for balance... Like you're saying, I have to balance out this problem with that other problem. Then it's not about a pro and con. It's about saying, you know, you don't want to go too far on this issue. Like what you could say is this solution goes too far on that in, on that criterion, and that solution goes too far on that criterion, and that could be a simple pro con stuff, I guess. Is there an example on the ranked choice voting? Like, you know, it increases. Um, the number of well, third party or you know clarity clarity versus accuracy in this case uh you want to really accurate uh represent people's preferences accurately which ranked choice voting does but uh because it's more complex it's less clear and people don't know that it represents their uh, choices so you're kind of trying to find a good balance between clarity and accuracy Yeah, I, I think the system is naturally assuming balance. Sorry, clarity versus oh, what? Accuracy. The, the people or, who... or precision versus uh, effort, where like, okay, you, yeah. you want to convey that you think these this is better than that. The first guy's the best. This is the second best, third best. You have to you have to consider them all though. Uh, as opposed to like, oh, it's, what's it's the more best? more effort, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's more effort. Thing. So that's yeah. another one. Yeah, it's a, it's another one similar, but not identical. And it's interesting to look at the many trade-offs that these decisions represent, right? Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting because a lot of times they argue with it gets too complicated. And the reason it's too complicated is because you have to research all these participants. I'm like, well, that technically has nothing to do with ranked choice voting. That's any system that has more than two candidates. That's and we want more than two candidates. <laughs> and that's the problem we're trying to solve for is that we only have these two candidates, right? So, yeah. yeah untangling all of that in a way that then you can talk about well if you have 15 candidates that's not very no, you know and, and, it's gonna research all that and, and again what, what are the aims right you're, you're seeing uh, I, I was quite amused in your in in the in kyle's map there was a problem with rank vote uh rank vote voting is that something only liberals want yes of course uh it's something <laughs> Right now, given the uh, distribution of opinions, the liberals want more accurate voting. Fancy that. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. If you're losing, you want to cheat. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think, I mean, the, the one of the main reasons for ranked choice voting for the pr people that want it is to break the, the, in the United States, for breaking the duopoly of the two-party system. So both parties are going to hate that because <laughs> they intrinsically will lose power. Um, so everyone hates it. So not likely to get passed. Um, that, that, and that's another argument. But in, in the reason tracker system, you know, the, in the, you, you can, you can raise and lower the impact of a claim, and in this case, an effect with reasons and, and pro-con arguments. So I my intuition is that that will be what's used to weigh and balance the different effects. Um, so I think that's in there, but I don't have a good example to test it out and see where the edges are. What situations does that break? Uh uh I, I think trade-offs are not well expressed by Procon or not easily. I mean, you can stave off the well, excess this, with it's Procon. not a it's not a it's not a it's not only a Procon system. So if you have four, three three pros and well, let's say you have a pro and a con, and then you say the the pro the pro claim the effect, this effect is more important than the other one, then you're then talking about the balance between those two effects. You're saying they both are true. Now, which one has the higher weight in the scoring system? And you argue about that weight with pro cons on the impact or the weight of those argument of those two effects, mm -hmm. the importance of the two effects. It's, 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 it, it seems to me if I wanted to game that system, I would- We're not talking about of... gaming because there is no. This is an expression of a single person's of single organization's ex, expression trying to bring in everyone. There is no gaming of this system. It's a Agreed. it's a closed <laughs> single expression. It's not a system where people are participating by putting data into the system. So I'm not worried about gaming at the moment. Yeah. But I you, can only you, solve you, so many problems at once. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, 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 what I'm saying is uh, I'm a bit suspicious of the fact that the weight is given by the number of arguments. That the weight is given by what? The number of arguments. Well, it's only initially done at the number of arguments. And okay, then so you, can, a, you can assign. Things. As you add as you add arguments as weights arguments, then you adjust the weights with reasons. So by default, just because no one said otherwise, everything has equal weight. But then you have, if you have a reason for something to have more weight, then it's... okay, you can you can tweak the weight. Okay, then that's fine. yeah, and you have to put reasons, and every reason why the weight is tweaked, uh, someone else can argue against. But that's very gameable in an open system. So, well, okay. the whole the whole scoring system is gameable at the moment. So. Okay. All right. Well, we're at the hour. Um, thanks, everyone, yeah. for your participation. Carl, looking forward to seeing more of what you do on that. That looks really good.
Thanks. I'll have a look at, at your code and let's have a chat. Yeah, please. Yeah, I'm interested. In, once I get to a little more features, I'm going to be branching out to see yeah, how it can connect to stuff. And I'd be interested in uh, publishing those highlights if they would think they'd be useful. Cool. Absolutely. And Jack, Excellent. I just added the license. It's all good to go. I mean, it was already licensed, I think, but now it's got the file. Cool. All right. Bye, everybody. Great to see, see you. Right. Check.